Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a presentation titled uh, Accessible Charts Using Music and Haptics. Uh, my name is Sukriti, as Manjula already said, I'm a product manager at Spotify at the moment. Uh, previously, I worked at Yahoo Finance as a product manager and before that as an Android engineer. Um, we are also joined today by Yaten, who is uh, the star developer lead on this project, who will be speaking about implementation details um, uh, in just a bit. Another special thanks to Larry Goldberg and the accessibility team at Verizon Media for uh, supporting this project and advising incessantly on um, everything that went into making this happen. And also thank you to the Hello A11Y team um, uh, for giving us this opportunity to present. All right, let's get to it. So in today's agenda, we'll be covering the motivation for this project, what led to uh, the problem statement, how we discovered uh, what were the most pressing concerns for users uh, with real users with uh, low vision or blindness. And then we'll get into some of the more design specific elements of how um, we decided to add the feature set that we finally ended up with. Uh, there is also a newer, new ish announcement as of last week, which is not part of the presentation, but um, because it's so recent that Yatin will, uh, will share with us. Um, we'll share the Android architecture diagram. Um, I'll be showing you a demo in just a bit. Uh, this project is also open sourced, uh, which we'll also get to in the implementation part and some of the next um, steps we'd, we'd like to take as, um, as, as a community and team uh, to take this further. So to give a little bit of context, finance charts are essentially um, one of the central pieces of um, a, a stock charts app or a stock app or a finance app, which is which was the initial motivation for making um, uh, the accessible charts feature. And if we think about it, charts quickly render in terms in terms of the status quo. And charts in finance is just one application of data visualization. This overall concept can be applied to a lot more platforms other than mobile and also a lot of other data visualizations other than line charts, for example. So to take a step back and assess the status quo, charts quickly render hundreds of data points that help us analyze trends. In the finance context, it is movement of a stock's price. Charts are great for people who can see. Or, or who can see well. They can quickly identify key markers such as domain, range, and the data points and points of interest at a glance. For visually impaired users, however, to rely, who rely on screen readers to access information on digital devices, it is not as straightforward. Most charts or data visualizations only have a label similar to that for an image with no way to meaningfully interact with the data. In the charts considered accessible today, the status quo is for screen readers to read the data points as XY, 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 as it would be in a tabular format. This is problematic on at least two levels. One, after about five or eight data points, it is difficult for the user to keep a mental image or a mental picture of the trend shown on the chart, which is the entire point of it. And second, on the spectrum of low vision to blind users, it's cognitively disruptive and inconsistent to see a chart on the screen and hear a table from the screen reader. Users with low vision face similar challenges to data visualizations across multiple domains, one of the most important of which and one of the most impactful of which is education. This is one of the reasons we chose to open source the solution so we can make this technique available to developers and designers that work on education software, among other areas. Next, we'll talk about the challenges related, and these are some of the design challenges related to accessible data visualizations, and especially charts for low vision and, and blind users. And the solution essentially combines music and more specifically tones that scale and map to human audible frequency, which basically means as the stock price goes up and down, so does the pitch of the associated tones, and we have haptic and spoken feedback, and a seamless transition, which we'll show in a demo later, between those modalities. Note that this solution is for Android, but the same or similar solution is also available on the Yahoo Finance iOS app. 
The Android part is open sourced, however, but the solution in itself is very extensible to desktop and other platforms. So some of the design considerations that you'll see oh, or notice in the demo uh, coming up are as follows. In about eight user studies during the discovery phase, uh, uh, which we did with eight blind users, we validated that beyond a handful of data points, it becomes challenging for users to create that mental picture we spoke about. Another important point that we learned was spatial recognition on the device was challenging. By this, we mean if we tap a certain point on the mobile device, as a sighted user, tapping that same point again is pretty straightforward. For a blind user, however, it is not as straightforward to spatially recognize that same coordinates or, or the same X, Y on the given screen, which is why we chose to make the chart experience a full screen experience. So you know the start and end of the chart is the same as the start and end of the actual device. The solution or the gist of it is the data points are mapped to a range of human audible tones that convey relative values of the time series. As the Y value increases, the pitch of the tone go up and vice versa. Since this was implemented on mobile, we also used haptic feedback to indicate points of interest, which in the finance use case are the highest of, of the time range that you've chosen, the lowest, the previous close and the current stock price. As a user scrubs through the chart, and on Android that means sliding with two fingers, they can hear tones corresponding to data points that the user or the pointer is focused on. At any point when they decide to stop and explore an area, more granularly, they can release the pointer and the screen reader will announce the last data point they were on. From here, the users can focus back and forth on data points preceding and following that particular point as they would in a table, which is what the status quo has made them used to so far. Visually, however, it will be consistent because the overall chart is divided into in invisible panels, each of which represents a data point. So when they're looking at one, one data point on the x-axis, the thing that's being read to them is also visually consistent for users with low vision and not necessarily blindness. When the user is overall scrubbing the chart, one, one, an, an additional thing we do is give haptic feedback on the points of interest, which is the high, low, previous close, and current stock price to indicate that there is something interesting there. After the first round of user studies, we validated that this solution works for um, the set of users that we were aiming to improve the experience for. And as we'll see in after the demo, about 80% of the participants were able to draw the overall trend of the chart by using the solution, which was really encouraging to see. Another design consideration that went in was the overall uh, description or, or, or the label of the chart that includes things like the X and Y axis range. The heading structure is also really important to note. If you if we notice in the in the status quo chart or what all users see, you'll see the time ranges are at the bottom of the chart. Whereas in the accessible charts full screen experience, the time range buttons are at the top. So the user doesn't have to waste time interacting with the chart before they before they get to pick uh, the range they're most interested in. So these are some of the optimizations we made to customize the experience for a low vision or blind user. Another functionality that we'll maybe get to hear in the, in the demo, it's not as clear um, unless you use it on the actual device, is there's a different texture to the stock price above versus below the previous close, which is something that is visually marked in financial charts and we tried to do it with um, an audio signal. Lastly, one of the most important lessons we learned during the research and development of this process was that users want a nuanced, customizable solution that works for them in their unique context. We, that, this is uh, the reason why we added the, the ability to change the pitch or the uh, frequencies that the user is most comfortable hearing. Another, uh, another point of personalization is the time, uh, is the data, date, date point format. 
which means that the time can be read as the 1st of January 2021 or just January 1st or just 1st to make it as concise or as verbose as the user prefers. Let's watch the demo now. I'm going to share my YouTube screen. Uh, if you could let me know that that's working, that would be great. Do you see the YouTube screen? Yeah, then can you give me a thumbs up? I can see you. Yeah, we can. Easy. Three months chart. Double tap to explore. Double tap to activate. Easy three months chart trending up. Current price 59.75. Previous close 57.63. High 59.96, low 55.59. Swipe or drag two fingers across the chart to explore. Double tap to activate. The 2nd of September 2019, 59.06, enlist 15 items. August 26, 2019, 58.16. August 19, 2019, 55.92. The 12th of August 2019, 56.65. BZ three months chart. Settings. Navigate up button. Double tap to act. Settings. Double tap to activate. Cool. That, that was the demo, uh, and which basically shows how all of these elements come together. And this is the response from the user studies that we were speaking about. These, these are the actual drawings from a, a subset of the users we tested with. Um, and on the bottom left is the, the reference chart that uh, we represented with this audio solution. And a majority of the users were actually able to draw with varying levels of accuracy, the um, trend of the charts. Next, we have Yatin to talk about uh, how this was implemented and, and more of the, the meat of the solution. Over to you, Yatin. Great. Thank you, Supriti. Appreciate it. So on Android, we approached this feature by creating a new custom view that would draw the chart and overlay it with the list of points. Uh, to use Android terminology, we used Canvas um, to draw the chart and a recycler view to populate the list of points. Uh, each point in that list would have a description containing its price and timestamp. Uh, and using Android's talkback feature um, or screen reader, uh, it would um, allow these descriptions to be read out loud as the user focused on a data point and swiped over to the next one. The user can also press down two fingers to interact with the trend line and hear tones play out loud. Uh, and the pitch of these tones uh, would match the point's relative position in the chart. We've extracted this audio chart view into its own project. So any developer would be able to pick up this chart and place it into their app and load it by providing it with the list of data point view models that we have defined. They can act upon the chart to do certain things like play a summary audio of all of the data points. The chart takes care of the scrubbing and the releasing gestures. And when you're done using the chart in code, you would dispose of it to clean up any resources. Next slide. So Earlier uh, last year, uh, we open sourced this project titled Songbird for other Android app developers to use if they were interested. Uh, and if you're interested in checking it out, the link to the GitHub repository is on this slide. Please feel free to leave any comments or open an issue. We're always open to any feedback and we thank you for it. We also got some direct user feedback through the App Store that the charts were pretty awesome and that the next big, big things could be accessible indicators, which is an advanced charting feature. Um, and this user appreciated the, uh, let me see. This user appreciated uh, the fact that they would be able to get into the Forex market uh, for the first time. They felt like that's a very real possibility and a very real show. Um, yeah. So next slide. And on Twitter, we had a user share our Android demo. And they said that they had never seen this method before. And it's probably the most unique accessibility solution to a problem that they've seen in a while. And they also state that translating graphs to tones is pretty trippy. And I'm assuming in a good way. 
So some of the next steps that we've wanted to take for a while were to use the pentatonic scale to make the tones a little bit more pleasant to listen to. The built-in tone generator uh, that Android provides isn't as pleasant to listen to. Um, another integration that we wanted to look into uh, was having it integrate with Google Assistant. So, you know, a user could ask the assistant, play the audio for this stock's performance today. Um, and we want to continue development of the open source library and get word out there, get some feedback from real users or other developers to see how we can improve and increase the feature set for this, for this project. Although um, for the first point, uh, as, as of, I believe, last week, we have a new version of this project using piano tones, which is far more pleasant to listen to. Um, it uses the sharp keys or the black keys on the piano, which in any order would sound pleasant to listen to. So as you scrub through, the different scale of that tone will play according to the, um, the trend of the chart. But if you prefer the pitch range and, and the other tones, because you have a little bit more control over it, you can use an older version of the, of the project and still have that. Um, but now you do have that option to use piano tones, which I believe is far more pleasant. Yeah. Great. Thank you for listening in and joining us. If we have any questions, we're, we're happy to take them. Yeah, uh, this is quite interesting. Yeah, and I'm just curious to know, like, since uh, the chats and high and low points, this uh, it's it's like you could do it, but when when it, are you looking forward to extend it to other forms of uh, images also? Like, I've seen people struggling with uh, interpreting maps and all. So, do you have any plans to take uh, take this ad? in other interpreting other forms of images uh data visualizations are slightly different from images in the way that they're uh, when we have the access to to the source of the data or or in this case which is the x and y arrays that we can play around with and and display in in a different way and in different modes it's a little more straightforward there are applications uh, on maps and especially other forms of data visualizations, for example, a pie chart or, or another kind of chart that are way easier to do than, uh, um, than an actual image, in which case you'd have to extract qualities or um, uh, attributes from the image to be able to convey that um, more meaningfully. That can be done and is, is being done with machine learning at various companies that are extracting information like who are the people in a certain image um, and, and things like that. Same thing I'm imagining can be done with maps. As far as this project is concerned, it's very focused on data visualizations at the moment, but that's a really interesting idea. Yeah, thank you. I hope uh, you progress. It's very pretty interesting to listen to you. Thank you. We have a question in the chat that is it possible to have a hands-on workshop about this? <laughs> uh, yes, it depends on what what would the hands-on workshop entail. Uh, whoever asked this question, would you want to unmute and want to elaborate on this? For the person who asked, if you would like to try it yourself, you could download the latest Yahoo Finance Android app and either enable TalkBack on your device or go to the settings page and enable audio charts. And you should be able to see a button on the, on the stock detail page under the chart to open the audio chart page. So if you actually want to see it live in production and, and try it out, it's possible now. Um, let yeah, me paste the link. Option. Let me paste the link to the uh, Play Store, and also the uh, open source project where you can actually see the code that Yathan wrote, uh, uh, and see exactly how it's implemented. Yeah, yeah. If you have questions, feel free to open an issue on the open source repository, and we'll, we'll try to answer it. By we, I mean Yathan. <laughs> Great. Anyone else with any questions? You can go ahead. We still have time. 
Uh, yeah, so there's one question from YouTube. Uh, Krishna asks, how can this help cognitive users like people with dys dyslexia and colorblind deficiency? So how does it help them, this particular use case? So someone with colorblindness should, um, if there's enough contrast on the actual um, chart, should be able to use regular charts to begin with. But if not, we've taken care to have um, enough of, of both focus contrast and the actual um, line chart labels, buttons, everything on the accessible chart experience to make it even more accessible with respect to contrast there. Uh, with respect to cognitive disabilities, the more modalities or the more ways we have of interacting with a certain data or information, um, the more options we provide users to, to absorb that data and to interpret it. So in that way, it's indirectly more accessible to people with cognitive disabilities. That wasn't the initial intent of, of this particular feature. It was very focused on low vision and, and blind users, but it does have applications uh, for other forms of disability. Which, is, which you'll see is a common theme among any accessible feature. It tends to have a lot of overlap. Absolutely. I think this is one of the features that, uh, I mean, playing an audio chart, I think that's a very interesting question somebody asked about the cognitive disability because I, so since they can't remember so many things as the users already showed that in the, <clears throat> in their, uh, in the study itself, so there's right. a way that even many users would prefer I, I um, you know, something read out to them, right? Right. So I think that way cognitive users can anyway uh, see and if they can't still remember, they can anytime go and, you know, make the talk back read out and, you know, understand and they may not every time remember, but at least, uh, at least some cognitive users and even people with learning disabilities use a screen reader. And and that's that's a good thing to know about. I mean, they only see this see the chart there. There's no distraction for them in this view, if right. I'm not wrong. No, there isn't. Yeah. So in that case, they have enough time, and there is no distraction for them to uh, for them so that they can at least try to understand or make sense of the chart. I guess that's that would be the way forward, is my understanding. Right. And and the the good part about this is they don't have to listen to every single data point. Uh, a lot of people with cognitive disabilities are able to interpret music a lot better than they're able to interpret spoken or written word. So once they do hit a data point they're interested in or, or, or something that they would like to explore further, that's when the spoken feedback takes over. Otherwise it's the tones um, that are um, uh, the main experience. Uh, 